This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is our first look at the Samsung Galaxy S21 and the S21 Ultra. So the new phones for 2021 in the flagship line from Samsung and released a bit earlier than usual. Usually they come out, well, a couple of months later in the year, but well, they've pushed it up, obviously. Well, the good news here really to start with is the fact that these are starting at $200 less than the previous generation from Samsung, that alone. Gotta like that, right? And when it comes to the S20, Ultra versus the S21 Ultra and the cameras, oh, massive improvement. Some other neat things like the S Pen too. We're gonna look at them now. So this is our first look review. I'm not gonna cover everything about the phones in detail in terms of reviewing the features because, well, we have that coming up, certainly by the time that the phones are available for you to buy. Why is this? Well, it's embargoes, but also to give us more time to actually test out the phones. That said, also, there's going to be a review from us of these. These little buds right here. These are the new Buds Pro from Samsung. And uh, that review will be coming up as our next review. And they're quite good, too. So this released at the same time. And also, their new little smart tags, little Bluetooth things that you should put on stuff that, so you don't lose track of where that stuff is. But getting back to the phones, Samsung provided us with two of the three phones as review loaners, the S21, which is the smallest with the 6.2 inch display, and the S21 Ultra, which is the biggest and most feature filled. And that one is a 6.8 inch display sitting in between, but well, screen size closer to the Ultra, is the S21 Plus, which used to be kind of my Goldilocks favorite in terms of getting you a big screen, but not being as big and heavy and a honking kind of thing as the Ultra with a lower price tag. So now the Ultra's come down in price and the cameras are getting better, I might lean towards the Ultra. I'll decide that for a full review. So S21 base model starts at $799. The S21 Plus starts at $999. The Ultra starts at $1199. And they're all matte finishes now. And as usual, just, well, just like last year, the Ultra gets the less exciting colors. You can get it in silver, in the very light silver, or you can get it in our matte black. Both are matte. Yeah. So if you want the zingy colors, like the violet or the pinkish kind of color and all that sort of thing, you're looking at the smaller models. But Samsung on their website in the United States does say there's a couple of ex colors that are exclusive to them. So you might be able to jazz it up a little bit. In fact, there's even for the S21 a red color that's kind of neat looking, S21+. Plus. Getting that out of the way, the CPU is the Snapdragon 888. It's the latest 5G chipset, and it does benchmark well. Share benchmarks in the full review, but leave us not say anything on the fact that these things always do get faster. If you're overseas outside of the United States, many countries will be getting Samsung's own Exynos 2100 CPU. I can't say how good or bad that is because we didn't receive that into for review because in the United States, we don't get the Exynos variant. So for the Galaxy S21 and S21 Plus, you're basically looking at the same camera hardware as the last generation, but with re improved AI or computational photography, really. And that can make a difference. So no more everybody's skin looking like airbrushed BTS boy band guys or something like that. More natural looking and less garish in terms of colors. And our full review will cover that. But I would say that, yes, they have certainly made improvements there that make the cameras seem better. For those of you who like naturalistic looking Google Pixel photos, for example, or even the iPhone is a bit more naturalistic typically than Samsung phones. Good here. Even more exciting for those of you who are really into high-end photography in your phones, the S21 Ultra is finally the real deal. The S20 Ultra was kind of face plant. The focus problems were just terrible with that. As a first generation of trying to do really long zoom and a hybrid technology and having a very large sensor, which is harder to work with actually in a smartphone. This time they have changed the hardware and we have better improved. I mean, we have really good focus here. There's the first thing I checked because, you know, it was real obvious that it immediately could focus far away, close, far away, close, anything in between. Responsive, switching between the four different camera lenses that you now get here quick focus in between them. So now you get a main 108 megapixel sensor, you get a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and you've got two telephoto lenses. One is 3x, one is 10x. And then it can do that hybrid zoom, space zoom, whatever they like to call it, 30x on the regular phones to 100x, not really that usable on the ultra. Uh, and they have new AI or software-based stabilization that helps with the fact that once you're doing those very long zooms, any little bit of movement is magnified. So you might have gotten like more blurry far-out zooms than you're hoping for for those uh, 
snoopy shots where you're snooping on somebody who's real far away or whatever it is you're doing with that really long zoom, that is improved as well. So yeah, I, I think this time the Ultra as the flagship of the Samsung camera phones will be a thing for real. That's good. Also new is the S Pen support here, which makes some people think that the Note line is going away. I'm thinking probably not. Different line of phones, a second chance for Samsung to refresh and sell us some nifty new things, a lot of reasons. So yes, the S Pen is supported. Yes, it's still Wacom EMR, which is one of my favorite digitizer technologies in terms of tilt support, natural pen feel, silky, yummy, great for notes, nice for art. And with a 6.8 inch display, you could actually have some fun drawing on this phone. Now, it doesn't support any of the Bluetooth features that you'll see on the Note line, for example. Um, so, Air Command works because that basically is just a hovering of the cursor that's detected to do Air Command stuff. But the fancy stuff like for presentations or remote camera shutter, that's not present here. A big and I think welcome change in design is the fact that the S21 and the S21 Plus have flat screens. So, you know, at first curved screens look cool, so people like them, and it was a way to give an edge to edge glass look without stressing the technology too much. But now we can pretty much do edge to edge without having the curves and stuff like that. So I think most of us are going to be happy. Easier to keep a secure hold on the phone, less accidental edge presses, though I might mention that even though these are matte back phones, they are still pretty slippery. Now the Ultra still does have a little bit of curve on the sides, left and right sides, as you're holding it upright in portrait orientation, but not much. And I don't know why it still has the curved glass, honestly, but it does. The fingerprint scanner is improved on this. It's 1.7 times bigger. It's ultrasonic, and so far it's behaved pretty well for me. So it's still in display, and it still has 2D facial recognition, which is very quick, not super secure like Face ID on the iPhone, but for most of us who aren't working for the CIA, it's probably adequate. Yeah. We still have Gorilla Glass Victus on board and 120 hertz display variable refresh, and anywhere, say, on the Ultra from 10 to 120 hertz. And yes, even at the highest resolution now, you can still run that. Battery capacity, you're looking at 4,000 for the smallest phone, 4,800 for the 21 plus, and then 5,000 milliamp. 15 watt charging, wireless, and yes, there is power share on board. So what's missing? This is all sounding pretty good. It may not make you want to upgrade from your S20, unless you have an Ultra maybe, and you're really looking for a camera that is all that, or an S Pen, yeah. Um, no charger in the box. See what the Apple has started? No charger. Only a USB-C cable. That's it. No earbuds. I don't think anybody cares so much about the earbuds, but yeah, no charger in the box. The other thing that's pretty sad is no micro SD card slot, something that Samsung used to have and go, ah, look at that. We still have that. Yeah, Apple doesn't have it. Other manufacturers like OnePlus, no, they don't have it. Well, it's gone. All three of these phones, no micro SD card slot. You pop open that tray and there's only a nano SIM card slot. Speaking of that, as usual, all major carriers and unlocked, so you can get unlocked if you don't want carrier bloatware, supports low, mid band, and millimeter wave 5G, so you've got all that covered. Now, it might be different in some countries. It might not get millimeter wave in countries where that's not deployed at all, but I leave that up to you to look up on the Samsung website in your own country. The S21 Ultra, by the way, gets a 1500 nit on max auto brightness display, which is up from 1200 nits last year, so that's nice. In terms of looks and all that sort of thing, build quality is great on these. They're well-made looking pieces. I, I leave that up to you. I think that this, particularly in the two-tone finish, what they've done with the S21 non-Ultras is very nice looking. I think with the Ultra, it's still a big half-pounder. and thicker and not quite as beautiful looking. It's interesting what they did with the camera and the massive array of medical instrument looking lenses on the back, but that's for you to decide, isn't it? I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see the full reviews of these and hit the notification bell too.